Okay, it's recording and we'll just so everyone can see, we did this integral right here and then we did this integral right here and now we are about to do the next one which is, I guess we'll say C, I haven't been writing them, the integral e to the 7x minus 2x to the 6 times the square cubed root of e to the 7x minus 2x to the 7dx. Okay, so we have to decide how to approach this integral. And we know that the first thing that we should always think about is, does a simple substitution work? So even though I have two things being multiplied together here, which might make you think integration by parts, we always wanna think about a simple substitution first. And if I'm doing a simple substitution, what would my u be? What a good u be here? The thing inside the root, exactly. So typically we wanna say what's under the root, or we could even take the whole radical, that would be fine as well. But we're gonna take what's under it, and a thing to notice, like a few things to notice are one, there's a radical, and we've said a lot of times it's useful to let u be the thing under that, but also the thing under it looks pretty similar to the thing on the outside. So it seems likely that this substitution will actually work, but we just need to remember the chain rule. So this is 7e to the 7x minus 14x to the 6dx. So don't forget your chain rule that causes you to bring that 7 down. Now we can see that this is the same thing as seven times e to the seven x minus two x to the six dx, which is pretty much what I have up there. I just need to multiply it by a seven, which means I also need to divide it by a seven. So now all of this stuff right here, that's my du. And I end up with 1 over 7, the cube root of u, d, u. But we want to write this in the known form form. So this is 1 over 7, u to the 1 over 3, d, u. And now we can just apply our power rule. So this is 1 over 7 u to the 4 over 3. Now I'm flipping the fraction, which gives me 3 over 28, e to the 7x minus 2x to the 7, all to the 4 over 3 plus c. Are there any questions about this substitution? Integration by parts would not have worked. So we could not use integration by parts here because if I were to pick my u and dv, so I would be like u dv, my u would be e to the 7x minus 2x to the 6. That's fine, I can take the derivative of that. But my dv would be e to the 7x minus 2x to the 7 to the 1 third. I can't do this integral. We just saw that in order to do this, I need that e to the 7x minus 2x to the 6. Another thing to note here is that neither, so even if you switched them, so that's, even if you switched them, even if you said, well, I can't do that integral, so let's try to do it this way. Even if we switched them, is either one of those things going to zero? 
If, if I, I rather, my u, if I continue taking the derivative, will I ever get to zero? Okay, but if you, st okay, so, but first just answer my question, will I ever get to zero? No. Will the things get simpler after I take the derivative and integrate? No. So they'll never get to zero. Also, both will get more complicated. And let's just see what we mean by getting more complicated. So I'm like 1 over 3 e to the 7x minus 2x to the 7 to the negative 2 thirds times 7e to the 7x minus 14x to the 6 chain rule. And then this is 1 over 7 e to the 7x minus 2 over 7 x to the 7. The new integral would be the product of all of this stuff. Does that seem like an easier integral or a more complicated integral? I'll ask again. Does it seem easier or more challenging? Definitely more complicated. It's more complicated than even what we started with. So it turns out that integration by parts just won't even work. Does that make sense? And does that help you to see that part? Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions about this integral and the substitution we did and how we recognize that substitution was a good plan? Good. Okay. Then moving on to D. Ah, okay. Where did it go? Okay. All right. So, D. What about here? This is the May 2019 finals. You got it, part. So this is going to be an integration by parts problem. I have two different kinds of functions. So this is the product of two different kinds of functions. And it's not substitution because that x squared is not the derivative of the power of e. So it's also not this integral x squared e to the x cubed dx. This would be substitution. Do you guys see the difference between the two? Good. Okay. So this is integration by parts. We want to pick our u and we want to pick our dv. What's our u going to be and what's our dv? u is x squared. You got it. So we'll put our x squared there. So there are two ways of seeing this. x squared eventually goes to zero. That's awesome. We want that. We also remember our mnemonic device. Oh, oh my gosh. Hello. That got big. Oh, 
plate. And what we have here is algebraic and exponential. So the algebraic is the U, the one that's first from the list is the U, which means that over here we have an E to the three X. So I take the derivative. What's the integral of E to the three X? So I want you to think about what we did with the cosine of three X earlier, or was it sine of three X? You got it, Abby. It's one third e to the three x. And so to answer your question part, um, no. And so the reason for that is the only time that that's really going to happen, the only thing that comes before algebraic, algebraic, these are the things that go to zero. So the only thing that really comes before that is that L. So like, I'm just going to go over here and kind of think about that. Let's say that I had x ln x dx. Well, x goes to zero, but ln x doesn't. If I were to try to pick my u to be x and my dv to be ln x, is this a known form? Is the integral of ln x a known form? No. So this is not a known form. And it actually requires integration by parts. In other words, we need integration by parts to do the integral of ln x dx. And so while we could do that integration by parts and get somewhere, like, yes, technically I could do that. It's just going to make for a more complicated problem. Does that answer your question part? Yeah. And then just to remind you over here even, because this is an important integral, u dv, here my u would be ln x, and my dv would be dx. and I end up with a nice simple integral. Okay, so let's go back over here and continue. What's the derivative of two x, two? So over here we said, hey, look, I need to divide by three because of that three x, so I'm dividing by three again, so I get one over nine, e to the three x. I can see that in one more go, I'm gonna get to zero, so let's do that. And then I'll have one over 27 e to the three x. Every other one gets a negative out here. Draw my diagonal arrows. Am I going to have an integral left over at the end? No. No, because it got to zero. So what that means is this is just equal to one third x squared e to the three x minus two over nine x e to the three x plus two over 27 e to the three x plus a constant. Exactly, so like that last integral right there is just plus c. The next integral is going to bring us way back to test one. Any questions about D? So E, the integral. 2 to 4 of the absolute value of x minus 3 dx. Who remembers how to do absolute values? We 
pick a test number, but first we find the point where we have to separate. So I start by saying my step one here is taking that inside and saying x, actually let's do it in black, in red. x minus three equals zero, gives me x equals three. You got it. So first I separate at x equals three. Now we pick the test numbers. So what's a good number between two and three? Why don't we go with 2.5? 2.5 minus three, is that positive or negative? Negative. And then over here, we'll go with 3.5. 3.5 minus three is positive. Now, how do we deal with that information? I put a negative in front of the first integral. You got it. So this is the one that gave me a negative number, which means that to get rid of the absolute value, I need to multiply by negative one. And here, the absolute value does nothing. And I'm gonna distribute that negative to make my life easier. So I'll have 3 minus x dx plus 3 to 4 x minus 3 dx. Okay, now we integrate, and these integrals are pretty easy. I'm going to separate this in two to make my life easier. So I'll have a star and a smiley face. So for star, I get 3x minus 1 half x squared that I'm evaluating between 2 and 3, which gives me 9 minus 9 over 2 minus 6 minus 4 over 2, which is 9 minus 6 is 3 minus 9 over 2 plus 4 over 2 gives me a minus 5 over 2, which is actually just a half. And then I'll do smiley face. And I'll get 1 half x squared minus 3x that I'm now evaluating between 3 and 4. So this is 16 over 2 minus 12 minus 9 over 2 minus 9. 16 over 2 minus 9 over 2 is 7 over 2. And negative 12 plus 9 is minus 3. Oops, what's going on here? Minus 3 which is also a half. Remember, this is absolute value. If you get a negative number, you screwed up somewhere. Both of these need to be positive. If one had been negative, you messed up there. So this tells me then that the integral from two to four of x minus three dx is equal to star plus smiley face, which is one half plus one half, which is just one. Are there any questions about this? Uh, no questions, but I just wanted to thank you for doing this whole review session because it's really helpful and I completely forgot about this crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that it's helpful. <laughs> I was making the test and there were a bunch of things that I also had forgotten about. I was like, oh yeah, I taught them that. And I'm like, how are they going to remember if I forgot? So, okay. What does the FR mean part? It means for real. It's like agreeing with me. Oh, for real. 
I didn't know. It's the first time I've seen that. I'm clearly an old person. Okay, are we ready for the next one? This one also is going to have something that you maybe don't remember to think about. So we have the integral of ln of the square root of 5x plus 1 over 5x plus 1 dx. When we have these ln problems, sometimes we want to use our ln rules inside of them. So ln of a to the power of b is equal to b ln a which means that ln of 5x plus 1 to the 1 half, what's that equal? You got it. It means I bring that 1 half to the front. And that's going to make my life easier in this problem. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here, is I'm going to rewrite this thing as 1 half ln of 5x plus 1 over 5x plus 1. And we saw that anytime you have a lawn that has a thing inside like that, this is a good plan. Now what? We always want to start by thinking about a simple substitution. Will a simple substitution work here? What's the derivative of lawn of 5x plus 1? You got it part. So that means that substitution is going to be a good plan because I pretty much have that. So I'll say u is equal to natural log. And remember we've said when we have a lot, a lot of times it's useful to let the u equal to that log. So I'm going to end up with 5 over 5x plus 1 dx. So I'm doing a little chain rule here. So I'm going to have a 5 and a 1 over 5. That's my du. Oops. So I end up with 1 over 10. I just circled the wrong thing for my du. Amazing. That's my du. 1 over 10, the integral of u, du. Sorry, can you quickly explain why the derivative is 5 over 5x plus 1? So we're just doing a chain rule here. For ln, that's always 1 over, but then what's the derivative of 5x plus 1? Just 5. Just 5. So that's where the 5 on top came from. So like if I have ln of a function, hang on. If I have ln of a function and I want to take the derivative, I just do the derivative of the inside divided by the inside. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Good. So now this one is pretty straightforward. 1 over 10. 1 half u squared plus c to give me 1 over 20 ln of 5x plus 1 squared plus a constant. For my final answer. Any questions? Do you leave the power of 2 to the top, or do you bring that down to in front? Going have to leave it at the top, because this isn't the same thing as ln of a to the b. This is like the difference between ln of a to the power of b versus ln of a all to the power of b. OK. Yeah. Uh, part, I actually don't, I haven't made your test 100%, so I actually don't remember how many, like, I don't know how many there are yet. But like, in my opinion, your last test, if you had studied for it and treated it like an in-class test, was a test that I would have given you in class. But I know that a lot of people spent like eight to nine hours on it. So if you're the same amount of prepared for this as you were for the last test, then it's going to take you like 20 hours. If, however, you're prepared and you treat it like it's a normal test, it's like a three-hour thing. Um, and I'm going to upload it at... 
9 a.m. on the 21st. You got it, exactly that. So you're gonna, you're gonna upload both test three and four at the same time? At the same time. So that way you can just deal with your time however you want. And if you're like more comfortable with some material, then you can do that fast and get onto the things that are not, that are more challenging for you. No, not 72 hours, Perth, I'm sorry. Also, I think this is the first time your name has been part in a very long time. <laughs> okay. We always wanna start by thinking about a simple substitution. Is a simple substitution gonna work here? My simple substitution would be, I would typically let it be the denominator. Is that gonna work? No, that is not going to work. So, seriously, that's what you changed it to? Okay, that is not going to work. So we're gonna do, partial fractions, maybe. We actually don't know yet if we need partial fractions because what do I need to do first here? The degree on the top is three, the degree on the bottom is two, which means what? Divide. It means long division, you got it. So FYI, for those of you that did not do this on your last test, this is what it meant by division should be necessary. It did not mean that there should be a line in the middle. It meant that long division should be necessary. So like the degree on the top had to be higher than the bottom. Okay, so let's actually do that long division. So we're gonna say x squared minus three x goes into x cubed minus four x squared plus three x plus one. So I have an x up top, x cubed minus 3x squared. And that leaves me with negative x squared plus 3x plus 1, which means now I have a minus 1. So I have minus x squared plus 3x that I'm now subtracting. And I have just a 1 left over. So in other words, I can now say that this is equal to x minus one, this top part right here, so that x minus one is the thing that goes up front, plus one, uh-oh, I wrote x cubed. Oh, thanks. Why am I echoing again? one over x squared minus three x dx. Okay, so now typically I would ask myself again, does substitution work here? I would ask myself, does u sub work? Does it? Does u sub work on one over x squared minus three x? Okay, what would I need in the numerator for it to work? Not just x, two x minus three, you got it. which means since it doesn't work, we're gonna go straight into partial fractions. But only on this part. 
that x minus one is already a known form. We'll deal with that in a little bit. So my next step then is to factor the denominator. So here we did long division. Now we want to factor x squared minus 3x has the greatest common factor of x, so that's x minus 3. Then we create our partial fractions de decomposition. So I have a over x plus b over x minus 3 which gives me one is equal to a times x minus three plus b x. What value should I plug in? Three and zero? Three and zero. So we'll start with x is equal to zero. Mm. And that's going to give me one is equal to a times negative three so a is equal to negative one third. Then we'll plug in three, which will give me one is equal, if that should be plus zero, zero plus b times three, giving me b is equal to positive one third. And now we're gonna take this and put it back in the integral. So I get the integral of x minus one plus, remember when we have fractions, we want to leave them in the numerator, negative one third over x plus positive one third over x minus three dx. And now these are all known forms. So I end up with one half x squared minus x minus one third, that constant that goes out front, ln x, plus one third ln absolute value x minus three plus c. <clears throat> okay, any questions about that? Okay, H, the last integral from this exam. Okay, you guys ready? How should I do this problem? <laughs> you don't. Integration by parts. Question. What could I change this to to make substitution work? x squared plus x. You got it, Jay. So the integral of 2x plus 1 times sine of x squared plus x would be substitution. My u sub would work because then the derivative of x squared plus x is 2x plus 1. u sub would work, whereas it does not work up here. This is integration by parts. So we're going to pick our u and we're going to pick our dv. What's a good U and what's a good DV? Uh, 
u is 2x plus 1. You got it. And then dv is sine x. So we take the derivative to the integral of sine. What's the integral of sine? Negative cosine. And then we keep going because we can see we can get down to 0. And what's the integral of negative cosine? Negative sine. Da -da. But remember, u sub would not work. But, okay, but the question over here where I said u sub would work, u sub would work on that green integral. So it was, what could I change x to so that u sub would work? So then we created this new integral. Yeah, yeah, so we're saying it would work in this situation right here. So this was like kind of a side question that we had asked. Okay. So this gives me negative 2x plus 1 cosine x plus 2 sine x, no plus c because I have bounds. What is sine of pi over 2? And what is cosine of pi over 2? Sine of pi over 2 is. Well, you have your charts. So sine of pi over 2 is 1, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So you guys have charts in your notes, hopefully, where you have that. So look that up. Then we end up with negative 2 times pi over 2 plus 1. That's a pi over 2 there. Times 0 plus 2 times sine pi over 2. Well, actually, I'll just write it like, I'll write them like this first cosine of pi over 2 plus 2 sine of pi over 2, then minus negative 0 plus 1 cosine of 0 plus 2 sine of 0. What is cosine of 0 and sine of 0? What's sine 0? Come on, you guys, I know you know this. Sine 0. That's like the one you all know. Yes, zero. And cosine zero is one. Okay, so then when we plug all this in, we get zero plus two times one minus negative one plus zero which gives me 2 plus 1, which is 3. Form a final answer. Okay, so in a second, we're going to go look at series. Are there any questions about this problem? Okay, we're going to go look at series, but we're going to do question four from this test first because it was a question that I had forgotten existed until I was making your test. So question four from the Make 2019 final says that we have the integral from 1 to 6 of f of x dx is equal to 7. The integral from 1 to 12 of f of x dx is equal to 3. 
the integral from 3 to 12 of f of x dx is equal to negative 4. Find the integral from 3 to 6 of f of x dx. You guys remember these problems? Yeah. Okay, so with these problems, we really have to separate the integral. So the thing that I find useful is to start off by finding the, the biggest interval. So in this case, my biggest interval is the interval from 1 to 12. And we can do this in two ways. We can kind of find 3 to 6, or we can start by just like expanding 1 to 12. I'm going to expand 1 to 12. So I can say that 1 to 12 of f of x dx. Now, another thing that I would need to do is if I had any bounds that were biggest to smallest, I would have to flip them. Do I? Do I have any bounds? Yeah, no, there are no bounds where the biggest is on the bottom. So if I did, that would be one of the first things I would do in this problem. Or if I had, for example, a two right here, then I would have to divide that two over to the other side. But I don't have that going on in this question either. So I can just immediately go to this step of trying to separate this thing. So. I have threes, oops, and I have sixes. And I have twelves. So the thing is, I know what this is. This is 3. This is what I want. I don't know 1 to 3 or 6 to 12. So those I'm going to have to figure out. And this is when we use kind of that other idea, where I'm going to say the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx. I want to separate this into things that I do know. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to 12 minus 3 to 12. Which are two things I do know. So here, if we want to see that, we're basically saying I have 1, 12, 3. The integral from this right here, this right here, I can take the whole thing and then get rid of that part. To give me a seven there. Then I need six to 12 as well. How am I going to do 6 to 12? Well, 1 to 12 minus 1 to 6. You got it. So I'll have 1 to 12 minus 1 to 6 f of x dx, which again gives me 3 minus 7 which is negative four. So again, we can kind of look at that. So I have one to 12. What I want is six to 12. So again, I can do the whole thing and just take away that extra stuff. So then this is negative four. So now we have an equation where the only unknown is the thing that I'm trying to find. So I can say then that three is equal to seven plus the integral I want minus 4, which tells me that the integral from 3 to 6, f of x 
dx is equal to 3 minus 7 plus 4, which is actually just 0. So there are lots of different ways, lots of different things that can happen in these problems. Yeah, sorry. That did not happen in this particular one. Is that enough? Okay, are you guys ready to move on to series? Some things to remember that show up are that, that you're gonna have to remember how to do are consumer and producer surplus, area between curves, Area from a graph, um, Raymond sums, the trapezoidal rule. And then those like simple original differential equations we did before we even looked at differential equations. So don't forget to study all that. Okay, you guys ready to move on? Yes, Takashi, test three is all on sequences and series and L'Hopital's rule. So if you guys' quiz is any indication of how prepared you are, you have a little more preparing to do. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for the series is there are actually, there are four of them. No, there are four or five, there's six series questions. Um, so we're gonna do the first two series questions and then the last four, I'm gonna write them all down and we're gonna just like talk about them. And we'll do them from easiest to hardest based on what you guys think is gonna be the easiest. Does that sound like a plan? Uh, no, I believe they're worth 18.75% each. Hang on. Yeah, 18.75 each. <laughs> um, that said, I think they could also be worth more. I think that there, there's an option for them to be worth. Yeah, OK, that's it. There's an option for them to be worth 12.5 and 12.5. And there's an option for them to be worth 18.75 and 18.75. Series is honestly one of the easiest things that we do in this class. It's just that it's the end of the semester, plus it's online. It's, it's, it's so much easier than integration. Exactly. It's the fact that it's online in the end of the semester that makes it hard. OK. It's also the most mathy thing that you guys have ever done, which perhaps is why you're not loving it. Okay, so ah. So 
So we are going to determine if the following series converge or diverge if they converge, if possible, find the sum. Okay, I'm going to write them all down. Wait, wait. Say so what? What are you guys saying? <laughs> well, if I only gave the people who have been putting forth effort towards the end of the semester a hundred, then I think I maybe would be giving like five people hundreds and everyone else would, what, everyone else just gets a zero? Well, Mo is one of the five people. Just going to throw that out there. Um, okay. Well, Fadi, uh, missed you a lot lately. Jay, definitely you've been working lately. It's true. All you've been talking about is samosas lately. That's a fact. <laughs> It's almost over. Well, it's not almost over. Next semester, man. Next semester. I'm sorry. Stupid virus. Um, it depends on what program you want to go into. And exactly, and which university you want to go to. Except I can't anymore because, because we're not there. I am unfortunately not teaching linear next semester given the, I mean, our schedules are going to change based on what they are. So I'm not teaching linear next semester and I don't, I applied for, uh, I applied for summer school. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. So I, I don't know yet. I don't, I just don't know. Um, the applications close on Thursday, so I'm hoping I'll know soon after that. Um, Sherry's awesome, but I don't think she's teaching linear next semester either. Um, Yeah, people don't like to, you get used to one teacher and it makes it hard to go with another one. Uh, I don't think Cam's teaching next semester either. I can check if you guys want. Um, hang on, let me put his writing these series down and that's, no, that's not true. There are other good teachers. Yeah, give me a second. I'm going to finish writing the series that we're going to look at down and then Mushir is super sweet. I don't know about Abdul. I really don't know him very well at all. Um, I'm going to pause this while we're talking about. OK, so we're going to look at all of these series that are no longer appearing on the screen. Give me a second. Morning, Massimo. OK, we're going to look at all of these series that are now appearing on the screen and do them. So actually we'll letter these, A, B, C, D. The first two questions that we always ask ourselves are, is this geometric? Is it a P series or can I separate it into geometric slash P series? So of all of the series up here, can any of them be separated into geometric or P series or are they geometric? Ooh, 
Wait, why did you start A at number 13? Because I was just separating it into, um, into how it's done on the, the final that we're looking at. Oh, so like great. 12 was a different question and then 13 was like all of these. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's just remember geometric looks like this. Geometric is a number to the powers within and P series is one over n to the p where p is bigger than zero. So are any of these geometric or p series? <sighs> we don't have to do this anymore if you don't want to. Yes, Justin, one can be separated. Separated in to two geometric series. Any other ones? Okay, look at number two. Is number two just into a power or do we have that minus two? Okay, I'm going to pretend you're all paying attention to me and that this matters to you. Um, we are paying attention. <laughs> I just don't know the answer. Okay, so this minus two right here and this minus two stops this from being a P series. So notice over in number 12, that plus was in the top so I can separate it. When the minus is in the bottom, I can't separate. So even though this is like into a power, this is not a P-series. Exactly, Jay. So that's that, that right there, this is going to be telescoping, which we'll get to in a minute. So B, what about B? The minus in B, is it in the top or the bottom? It's in the top. So can I separate this? I can. So as long as the minus or plus is in the top, we can separate. Can separate. And when I separate, does this look more geometric like or P series like? Is it numbers to n or n to powers? Powers, which means it's more P series. So I can actually separate this into two P series. Now, what about C? C is totally going to be a ratio test. It has that factorial there. So this is not geometric. It's not a P-series. It has the factorial. So the factorial, so ratio test. Now what about D? Yes, I'm going to have my office hours today, Massimo. And if you need me at another time, I can message you, or you can message me, rather. Geometric, you got it. So we're going to start by just doing the geometric and the P-series one, which is all of them, except for two. So let's do 12 first. Sum n equals zero to infinity. We said we need to separate this, so I'm just gonna immediately separate it. I'll have four over five to the n plus the sum n equals zero to infinity, three to the n over five to the n. So I'll call this a star and an asterisk. For star, what is my r?
So for geometric series, we're always looking for the A and the R. And remember, R is the thing that is to the power of N. So is that four to a power of N? So only the five. So my R is actually one over five. The absolute value of R is less than one, so this converges. Now, we'll look at asterisk. What's my R over an asterisk? My R is three over five, you got it. So again, the absolute value of R is less than one. So again, this converges. Now, I know converges plus converges is equal to converges. But remember, we were asked to find the sum if it converges. So can I find the sum of a geometric series? The answer is yes. Remember, I can find the sum of geometric series and telescoping series, and that's it. So these are both geometric, so we can find the sum. The sum is gonna be A over one minus R. So now we need to find A. Who remembers how to find A? No one. We plug in n equals zero, exactly. We plug in that number right there to find a. So here my a is gonna be four over five to the zero, which is just four. So a over one minus r is equal to four over one minus a fifth. Which gives me a five. Then over here, my a is three to the zero over five to the zero, which is actually just one. So my a over one minus r is one over one minus three fifths, which is one over two fifths, which is five over two. So we got that five and we got that five over two so my answer is that it converges to the sum of those things. So remember with geometric series, it's all about the A and the R and the A over one minus R. So we're gonna do the other geometric series that we had here. The other geometric series was D. And again, the first thing that I want to do is identify what my R is. So what's my R here? Remember, it's the thing to the power of n. You got it. It's going to be negative 5 over 4. On the top, we have a negative 5. And on the bottom, we have a 4. Now I'm looking at the absolute value of R. What's the absolute value of R? Bigger than one. I sound like a robot, what? Okay, as Patty said, it's bigger than one. So does this converge or diverge? Diverge. Do I really sound like a robot? Like a lot, it messes up. Okay, am I still sounding like a robot? I'm so done with the semester. Well, the semester's almost done with you as well, so 
just persevere a little longer. I still have so much because I've literally just been pushing all my schoolwork to like this week. <laughs> that was a bad plan. Ugh, I kind of feel you. I have so much grading to do because I've just been ignoring it. Hmm. Okay. So we dealt with the two geometric series. Let's go back and deal with the one that we said was a P series. And that was B here. So B we said we can separate into two P series. So let's go ahead and do that. This is the sum n equals two to infinity into the E minus one over N cubed minus the sum n equals two to infinity the cubed root of n squared over n cubed. I do have to grade. Although your quizzes, I'm gonna be honest, were really easy to grade. It was kind of just like, oh, zero, zero, zero. Oh, look, someone did work, yay. Zero, zero, zero. I mean, if you guys want to do that on your tests, that's fine. But I, I also would prefer that you not, because I'd like to not, you know, fail everyone. Oh, well, you should have told me. I was wondering where you were. Are you feeling better now? No, Parth, you were there. Oh my god, Emily, that's terrible. Okay, well, let's keep going with this. So, so now we wanna actually make this into a P-series, which means that we need to be looking at what happens when N is just in the denominator. So I'm gonna say I have one up here. This will be N to the three minus E minus one. So here P, my P is equal to three minus E minus one. So which four is four minus. minus E. And then minus the sum N equals two to infinity, one over N to the three minus two thirds. So here my P is three minus two thirds, which is seven thirds. Mm. Now is four minus E bigger than one or less than one? Yeah, miss for the second series, it's n equals two. Lovely, Audrey. Two, yes, that should be two. So p is equal to four minus e, which is bigger than one, and p is equal to seven over three, which is bigger than one. Now remember, if my p is bigger than one, that means they converge. So this converges, and this converges. And I know that converges, minus converges is equal to converges. So my final answer here is that this converges. So were any of those really all that hard? Yeah, they were. Largely, the things I did aren't things to understand. They're things to know how to do. Oh, yes, way too stupid part. Okay, so let's go back. The next thing we're going to look at is C because we were able to see immediately, hey, look, that factorial means ratio test. So now let's do C and apply the ratio test. And C is the sum n equals one to infinity n two to the n over n plus one factorial. You guys, you're making me sad. <laughs> Limit n goes to infinity. Remember, first we do n plus one, so I have n plus one, two to the n plus one over n plus two factorial. Then I take my original thing and I flip it over. n plus one factorial over n two to the n. There you go. So that's my a sub n plus one. 
and this is my A sub N. And we're gonna really talk about this because this is a thing you did not know how to do on your quizzes. Do I have a ratio of factorials? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So put N plus two because it's zero one. You got it. Okay, so Jay, to explain again, for the ratio test, first I'm taking every single N and replacing it with N plus one. So I have N plus one, two to the N plus one, N plus one plus one factorial. Then I'm dividing it by A sub N. Division by A sub N, so this is actually one over A sub N, is the same as flipping A sub N over. Jay, did that help at all? Okay, so now as Fadi said, N plus two is my bigger factorial, so I want to expand it until I get to the smaller factorial. Can I take the big stuff? Yes, exactly. So especially, and more than anything, it's that factorial, but also that power of N, the mixture of those two things makes it really clear that this is gonna be a ratio test. Thank you. Can I take the big stuff when I just have factorials? Can I just like be like, in factorial, in factorial? No, remember we can't take the big stuff with factorials. We have to expand the bigger one like I just did with that n plus two factorial there. Also that two to the n plus one is now going to become two to the n times two. So then I'll have n plus one, two to the n, times two times n plus one factorial, all over n plus two times n plus one factorial times n times two to the n. And we can cancel out the n plus one factorials and we can cancel out the two to the n's to see that what we have left here is the limit as in approaches infinity, n plus one times two over n plus two times n. Now can I take the big stuff? Yes. Yes, there are no more factorials, there are no more exponentials, this is all polynomial now, now I can take the big stuff. Could I also just do L'Hopital's rule if I wanted? Yes, I could also do L'Hopital's rule. So this is big stuff or L'Hopital's rule. So I'm taking my n and my two and I'm taking my n and my n. And what is this gonna give me this limit when I cancel out those n's? One over infinity, two over infinity, which is just zero. You got it. And zero, remember, we're always really comparing to one. Zero is less than one. So does this converge or diverge? Diverge. Converge. Less than one means it converges. So this converges by the ratio test. Now it said, let's go back and remember what it said. Okay. If they converge, if possible, find the sum. Is it possible here? No, it's not possible because we can only find the sum for geometric or telescoping series. Oops, what just happened there? And so we'll just make a note. Can't find sum because not geometric or telescoping. Which brings us to our last series that we have, which is A, the sum n equals three to infinity, two over n times n minus two. I'm just gonna briefly apply the test for divergence. The limit as in approaches infinity of two over n times n minus two. The reason that I'm doing this is because it's not geometric. 
It's not a P series and it has no factorials or exponentials, so no ratio test. Also, this is factored, which means it's probably telescoping. But we just want to apply the test for divergence first because we want to make sure that it doesn't apply because if the test for divergence applies, that's great. That means we're done. But as Jay said, this goes to zero, which means that the test for divergence fails. And we have to do something else. And now this is telescoping. So that's something else we would do brings us to scale telescoping because that's the only thing left. Do you guys want to do it or do you want to be done? <laughs> do it. Okay. All right. Let's do it. I understand. <laughs> okay. So TDF fails do something else. If you think about the list of like ideas that we had or like the steps that we're going to follow when we're doing series, first we check it's geometric or a P series. Not. Then we're like, does this look like a clear ratio test problem? slash try the test for divergence. We can kind of do those interchangeably. Well, it doesn't look like a clear ratio test problem and the test for divergence failed. That leaves us with the telescoping series. So for telescoping series, we want to start off by finding S sub n. So that's n equals three. Instead of stopping at infinity, I'm going to stop at n. Now it's important to notice that this starts at three, which means when I'm expanding this thing, the first thing I'm gonna plug in is three. So I'm gonna get two over three times three minus two is one. So that's two thirds. Oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing here? I just completely skipped a step, excuse me. I don't know what's going on in my brain, guys. Okay, what should I have done instead? Partial fractions, exactly. So this is telescoping, which means right is a subtraction. Partial fractions. So I have two over n times n minus two is equal to a over n plus b over n minus two. Resulting in this. So now I need to plug in n is equal to zero. I'm plugging in my zeros so I get that two is equal to a times negative two plus zero, and a is equal to negative one. And then I'll plug in n equals two. To get two is equal to a, or rather zero, plus b times two, and b is equal to one. Oops. Okay, which means that my sum is the sum n equals three to infinity, negative one over n plus one over n minus two. But I want you guys to remember that we said having the negative first is not usually the best way to go about this. We wanna have something minus something. So we're gonna rewrite, so minus is second. So in other words, we're gonna think of this as n equals three to infinity, one over n minus two minus one over n. And now we look at the partial sums. So we'll say S sub n is equal to the sum n equals three. Now we're stopping at n. Now we're doing what I had preemptively started doing. And the first thing that we wanna plug in is that three right there. So 
So first I plug in three and I get one over three minus two. So that's one over one minus one over three. Plus the next thing I'll plug in is four. One over two minus one over four. Can I stop expanding yet? Not until something cancels out. Not until something cancels out. You got it. So then plus, now I'm going to plug in five. So I'll have one over three minus one over five. Now can I stop? Yes, because now those one over threes cancel out. So once I've seen something cancel, I can stop in the beginning. So if that's what you mean by not really, what that means is maybe we still have things to plug in at the end. So I'm gonna stop in the beginning because I have my pattern. My pattern here is negative, skip to, cancel, positive. Okay, so now I'm gonna have my plus dot 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 plus the last thing I plug in is n, always in. N. Say again? It's n, no? Yeah, always in. You got it. So then what's going to be the thing before that? n minus 1. n minus 1, and then n minus 2. So what will I have when I plug in n minus 2? One over n over four, n minus four. One over n minus four. So not one over zero. I'm replacing that n in with n minus two. So n minus two minus two, that gives me one over n minus four, then minus one over n minus two. Then n minus one minus two, that's one over n minus three, minus one over n minus one. And when I plug in n, I always get the same thing. And we can see here that those n minus twos now cancel out. Now, we want to figure out what cancels out in the beginning and what cancels out at the end that we did not see. So that brings us to our pattern, the negative skip two cancel positive. So I'm going to start at my negative here, and I'm going to skip two and cancel the positive. So in other words, I'm canceling out the negative one fourth with the one over n minus four. Uh-oh. Do you guys still hear me? Mm-hmm. You do? Yeah, I'm still good. It just robotic for a second. My computer is telling me that my speaker is not working. Your computer's wrong. That's... Good news. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Next is the next negative I have is this negative one over five. So now I'm going to skip two, but I'm pretending the plus dot 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 isn't there. Remember, so I'm skipping two, skip one, skip two, and then cancel the positive. So that means this negative one fifth is canceling out with the positive one over n minus three. Good. My next negative is the negative one over n minus one. If I skip two, is there anything to cancel? There's nothing to cancel. Oh. So that means I'm done canceling things out, right? Because I've gotten to a point where if I skip two, well, there's just nothing there. So now I can say that my S sub n is equal to the two things that were left over in the beginning. So that's one plus one half then plus the two things that were left over in the end, one over n minus one minus one over n. Okay, are there any questions about how we got this? You find the general term of the sequence first.
in the same way that you did for the first problems. In a second, let's finish this and then I'll, then I'll talk about that for a second. Okay, so that's this. So what that means is this is equal to three over two minus one over n minus one minus one over n. There you go, Fadi, good job. Okay, so then I'm doing the limit as in approaches infinity of this thing. And what does this go to? Three over two. And was this telescoping? Was this telescoping? Yes. So this was telescoping. So what we did here, this three over two, that's what it converges to. Yeah, it's two over 11, not 11 over two. This converges and our sum is three over two. And then we are done with this problem. Are there any questions about this? Okay. Okay.